12 minutes left to decide who leaves the Bears Dan Den undefeated tonight and essentially who wins Region 3 Quad A. We got a bunch of scores from around the area, some good games going on, but nothing better than this one. Nothing has rocked like this one has tonight. So Thompson down four. 86 yards away from it, and they're going to bite off a big chunk of it with Bubba Murray straight through the middle for a big first down up to the 44-yard line. Yeah, Bubba Murray, who was, I thought coming into this year, Murray was going to be one of the backs that put up 1,500, 2,000 yards. He's only had 66 carries this year, a dynamic runner. 16 yards on the carry. Speaking of unbeatens, Jefferson County and Screven County play next week. They're both winning big. We'll have that in a moment for you. And this is Murray again, loose again across midfield, and here come the Bulldogs. Well, we got asked at halftime about what happens if you can't be near a television to watch this game, if you can't get into the stadium here tonight. Call whoever. Tell them. Dial it up at WJBF.com. Wherever you are, you can watch the finish of this game. 11 minutes to play. Thompson down four and driving from the Bears' 49-yard line. This is Tyler Curry, who we have not called tonight. He picks up a big first down inside the 40 to the 38. Yeah, that's the sophomore. The Thompson folks were telling me about this kid. He's been hurt a little bit this year, but he's the one Last year they told me he could fly, and this year they were telling me he's going to be really, really good. Not getting the carries McGee's getting because he's been banged up some, but they say this kid is dynamic. Now it was Thompson trying to go hurry up, and Burke County forced to call a timeout. And Napleton Infinity timeout on the field. Man, oh man, oh man. We will take time out with them. Burke County 21, Thompson 17, a Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout. Thompson driving down four. It is first and 10 from the Burke County 38 yard line. And they'll keep it on the ground once again. And once again, that is Tyler Curry, the junior. And he'll push ahead. They give him about three. Second seven. Yeah, I said sophomore earlier. They got him listed as a junior. Means he gets to go to prom at least. Yeah. Well, they might have got invited as a sophomore, John. <laughs> That's true. Now he can invite just, people. Because you and I didn't. That How, about <laughs> <laughs> How about that push from the Burke County defensive yeah. line led by big number 42, Eric LaForce. Also in there, there Tyreek Washington. Good job wrapping him up, not letting him get away. Washington got in there first, and then of course finished him off. Yeah, Washington's another great football player. We've been mentioning Miles Simon a lot. Washington's a tough customer too. They remember before Cornelius Washington, there was Marcus Washington. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marcus. Went to Georgia. Yeah, Marcus was was a beast, and Cornelius was. Cornelius was. A, they were both beasts. Also went to Georgia. Yeah, also went to Georgia. <laughs> And Rob, or uh, Miles Riding to the side of this. Thompson had to Time out. burn a time out here. That'll only leave them with one left here for the final 924 left to play. Well, we've been talking about these other games. We've so focused on this one, but we've got some other good finishes around the area. Yeah, Evans really putting it on their rival Lakeside. Big rivals there. It's 34 zip Evans. Grovetown trying to keep pace with Evans now. They've lost Evans, but if it's a three way tie in that region, Grovetown still has a chance. It's 28 to seven, they lead Greenbrier in a big game. Also in a playoff game, Heritage out of Noonan leads Augusta Prep 21 to 12. Uh, Baldwin on top of Heps with seven nothing. That was early, no scoring update for a while for that one. Washington County leads Northeast Macon, it's 38 to three. Also Screven County leads Glen Hills 20 to zero. Jefferson County on top of Josie, it's 28 to 12. Aquinas trails Lincoln County, it's 12 to six in the fourth quarter in that one. 
and Harlem and Laney, 14-14. A little bit of wow. surprise there. Laney's been struggling. And by the way, that Evans game now a final. They win 42 zip. Bulldogs need seven on third down. Ridings missed his man. Oh, he had Dracori Crawford streaking open. Crawford back in the game. Remember, he was hurt earlier. And he had Tut open on the bottom, uh, on the near side, or uh, the near side of the field as well. And Ridings has thrown some really good passes tonight, but that one off the mark. And a Ken Nugent one call, that's all decision well, for Rob Ridings. And with 9.18 to go in the fourth. Well, this spot of the field, and the way go. County's run the ball and eating up the clock, I think you can go for it here. Well, try to throw again. Ridings under pressure, in trouble, on the run, first down, out of bounds at the 22 yard line, flag down late. Catch the call there. Burke County believes it is on the Bulldogs. Yeah, I think we're going to have a crackback block. And it, all important call from Chip Huffman. Here it Same comes. Same call that hurt Burke County earlier. Got a personal foul, blindside block mm -hmm. in the white thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nathan Edwards called it before they did. Well, that will cost Thompson a huge first down. Great. Yeah, they're working on spotting the ball now. Yeah, you see. Burke County had an 85-yard touchdown call back, but this play, yeah. huge, because that was a first down run by Rodings. Still fourth down. So two blindside blocks have cost each team yeah. huge plays in this ball game here in the second half. And that is going to move the ball all the way back to the 42. Oh, yeah, there you saw it coming in at the end of the play, number 25 for Thompson. That is Tyrese Jones who laid the block. And it's so tough to teach kids not to do that because that's what they've done their whole life, and this is a new rule this year. And, well, I, look, they're trying to protect kids. I get it. But it's really tough to make them change so fast. It's something they've always done. Bulldogs will go for it on fourth and 14 now, or will they just try to draw Burke County off? And it looks like time, another Naples Infinity of Augusta timeout on the field. And that is Thompson's final timeout of the game that could with 9.08 left to play. Wow. Not sure what was going on. Matt said that it looked like Christian Tut, something was going on. He was upset about something, and Coach Ridings was upset. I don't know what exactly happened over there, but again, that that could be big. Wow. On the other side, Eric Parker of Burke County, not only trying to stay unbeaten tonight, wrap up a region title for the Bears, but also make a little Burke County history. He's already the winningest coach in school history, trying for his 100th win here as Bears coach. Well, he, he did an amazing job with what he did, turn around the Laney program, and he's been great here at Burke County as well. Right now he's got a lead, but he's facing a tough, tough opponent in Thompson. Here we go, fourth down. Bulldogs need 15. Ridings intercepted. It is picked off by Jalen Odom, and Burke County comes up big. Jalen Odom has been one of the starters of the game as well, along with Tamari Kelly. That ball floats up the middle of the field just a poor pass. Just a poor throw there. Watch, he just floated it up in the air. Never saw the, well, he was following the receiver, Ridings was with his eyes, and he never saw the defender come from the other side. And not only does that give Burke County the ball, but it gives Burke County the ball in excellent field position. And now they will start to work a little clock with William Knight through the middle. And fisticuffs at the top of your screen. And flags fly from all over the place. And it's going to take a second to sort this out. Well, I like what I see from a couple of players on the field. Number 59, Jacoby, Jacoby Roberson, number 59 for Burke County, came in there and grabbed his, his Burke County player and got him out of there. 
I think the officials are going to. I, I believe we're going to have one of those situations where it's a personal foul on each team. Well, they'll offset. But also that would mean if either of those players do something later in the game, could cost them going down the road. Well, I like. I like personal what Chip foul. Huffman's doing in that this spot. Way. It's a huge game. Yeah, first foul. Yeah, this both way. teams doing it. He's not going to kick anybody out. Just offsetting. And we could hear him in our ear I say, I'm to talk over No, no. <laughs> he, he, we yeah. could hear him in our ear, though, yeah. say, I'm not going to eject anybody for yeah. that. So. And now we're trying to figure out where the ball should be placed. Well, Knight ran the ball. I thought with what happened at first when the players jumped up and ran, I thought there was a fumble at the end of the play, but it was a, some pushing and shoving going on. Well, they're going to give him credit all the way up to the 42-yard line. And so that's where Nathan said it was going to be. So as He's right as always, at least during when, during the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that will be a six-yard run. Kind of trying to hustle and line up here. Dallas Rodgers still moving. Clock running now under nine minutes. Knight to keep again. Knight pushing his way across the 40 to the 38-yard line. Knight. We got a man down for Thompson, Devin Randall. Watch the shot right here, Knight. It was almost a helmet to helmet. I mean, Knight had his head lowered as well. Right there. Oh, it was helmet to helmet. Yep. Boy, he took a shot. Number 92. That's Thompson. Randall, and he is still down on the field. Yeah, he they, they hit helmet to helmet. Randall, well, actually, he looked like he's, he's limping, too. Yeah, Randall coming off a little bit shaky. And that could be big because he's one of those two big tackles they have in there, he and Larkins. Larkins is almost big enough to cover that whole position, though. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Yeah, Randall, Randall was so, he and Larkins were so good last year in this game at Thompson. Bears need three. It is Kelly back in at quarterback. Straight ahead, and it is a first down just across the 35-yard line. And the Bears will have a fresh set of downs on the legs of Cameron Holmes. Well, as as solid as Bill Knight has been this year, and he's good, and he can run, but he's not as dynamic as Kelly. So they got Kelly back in there who's kind of the guy who can break one at any moment. As if on cue, Kelly inside the 25 and out of bounds. Matt Lane down on the field said something during a break to us that he, Kelly's the fastest guy on the field. And you got a four-star top 100 recruit almost in touch and some other blazing fast guys from Thompson, but I agree with him. I think maybe some guys might be just as quick, but in all-out speed, a foot race, I don't know if anybody beats Kelly. That kid can fly. They need one and a half on second down. They're going to get that and then some, and guess who? It is McGee again. Well, last year when Thompson needed a big play to seal it, Tuck came up with the punt return to seal the deal. They're going to need a big play from somebody here because Burke County – is marching their way down towards that end zone, and if they get another score, there ain't much time left. You don't want to go down two possessions. Inside eight minutes. Kelly will hand off this time. And Ronnie Howard, again, getting in there. He's got all that time to make movies, and he still comes and makes the play. <laughs> We've had a Phil Collins and a Ronnie Howard yeah. this year. you got to love it. Burke County content to let this clock run down near seven minutes now. The funny thing is we've dated ourselves because he's going to watch the game. He might not even know who Ronnie Howard is. <laughs> well, he's the guy that uh, directs those movies. How about this? Odom to the left side, pushing his way, twisting his way. Close to a first down. I believe he's got a first down inside the 15-yard line. Well, good effort there. Well, they're going to say he is just short, but what an effort by Odom. He, he, he should have been six yards short. Yeah, he sort of stutter-stepped in kind of a, a Le'Veon Bell where he was kind of slow to go, and then all of a sudden he wasn't going to be brought down there at the end of the play. And there's your Steelers reference for the week. I worked it in there, baby. <laughs> Thank you. 
the Bears inside the Augusta Technical College red zone, but they needed about a half a yard on third down, and I believe they've got it. They, they got do it. a yep. big first down. Christian Tuck came on a blitz and almost had him behind the line of scrimmage, but he was able to fall forward and get the first down. They give him two full yards, so it'll be first and 10 at the 13-yard line of Thompson. Kelly stays in at quarterback. This time, going to give it off. It is Odom again. Keeps his feet moving once again, and he might have another one. Hey, Jalen Odom said, I know y'all loving Demar Kelly right now, but I got a touchdown and a whole bunch of yards. I might be the McDonald's offensive player of the game. That is eight yards on that play, and this Burke County offensive line has completely taken over the line of scrimmage on this drive. Well, they're monstrous. They average about 290 as it begins to impose its will on Thompson as McGee inches forward close to another first down. I believe he's going to be. Nope, they're going to call it a first down. So it's going to be first well, now they're saying bring out the chains. It is very close. So let's catch the measurement. Watch it. Watch it. First down, Burke County. Yeah, the, the, the down lineman, I, I just did it up. They average 286 is the, the average of that offensive line for Burke County, 286. They got a 325, a 305, a 300, a 260, and a 240. Mm. The 240-pound guy might not even get to eat. That might be the problem. <laughs> they got Simon in there, Miles Simon in. On the near side. Yeah. First and goal from the four. It is Kelly. And he's met by a wall of white jerseys and pushed back. Might have gotten it to about the two. It's one of these games you hate to see anybody lose. These two you teams bet. have both played great. But like you said, Burke County has sort of taken over. And even in the first half, they ran the football 179 yards rushing. Thompson doesn't have that done to him very often. Usually in, when teams hurt Thompson in big games, it's throwing the football, not running it. Second and goal from the two, Kelly, keeper, Kelly, touchdown, Burke County. Well, that one-yard run total. gave him 277 yards for the night, and more importantly, it put him up and made it a two-possession game. So the Bears convert the turnover into a touchdown and have now taken a 10-point lead. They'll try to make it 11 with the Georgia Military College kicks for college extra point and watch that. That could be big. Well, it could be. And keep in mind, Thompson missed a field goal as well, a short one. Thompson missed a 27 yarder. It would be a seven point game. Instead, it's a 10 point game. So, what that missed extra point does is now Thompson can tie with a touchdown and a field goal as opposed to having to score two touchdowns changes what Rob Ridings may do as we go forward in this final four minutes and 40 seconds. Well, somebody Thompson's going to desperately need if they're going to come back is Christian Tutt, and as Nathan's pointing out, he might have something wrong with his hamstring. He's really laboring a little bit out there. Back after this. Burt County leads the number two team in the state 27 to 17 with four minutes and 40 seconds left to play and about to kick it away. And this would give Eric Parker an eight to three all time lead in the series as well. Christian Tutt is in the game for Thompson, but he will not return the kickoff as it is another short kick taken by Jacroy Crawford and the Bulldogs will set up shop at it's like about the 32 yard line. Don't forget we have our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game coming up for you afterwards. You'll want to stick around for that. It may still be decided. This game yet to be decided. 
Thompson down 10. Needs to go fast. And they will start on the ground, and what a run right through the middle by Tyreek Braswell, making something out of nothing. Yeah, and Thompson that'll... needs a score here. They cannot afford to, to give the ball back to Burke County without getting points, that's for sure. And that's Good hard a... run by Braswell. Yeah, he got 10 on it. It's a big first down. Up to the 42-yard line. Bulldogs moving quickly. Again, it's Braswell, this time tripped up in the backfield by guess who? Once again, it's Miles Simon. So, clock ticks now down here. Four minutes left to play, 4-10. And now less than that. Bulldogs on the move. Play gained one. It is second and nine. Ridings. Looking for it all. Got his man. It is complete. Tyrese Jones inside the 30, down to the 25-yard line. That is a pickup of 33 yards and a huge Thompson first down. Yeah, huge throw here by Ridings. Like I said, he's been off on a few, but that one, when they needed a big play, he came up with it. So the pass to Jones picks up the first down. Now it's Thompson from the 25-yard line of Burke County and an incompletion. Stops the clock, which is good news for Thompson. Yeah, overthrew Crawford a little bit there. And also, keep in mind, Crawford and Tut, both are laboring a little bit. Crawford had the, the uh, cramping earlier, and Tut has either got cramping or a hamstring or something's bothering that right leg. Something to keep an eye on here down the stretch. 3.40 to play in the ball game. And Thompson needs two scores. All right, we're set, we're set. Up the middle, he's got room. Oh, what a hit! Laid by, I couldn't get the number there. We'll get that in a second. First of all, the run by Tyler Curry uh, picks up a first down, so that's a great run. But check out this hit. Looked like maybe 46, but I could not see for sure. Could be an Augusta Pain Center hit of the game nominee. We'll keep an eye on it as Thompson moves into the Augusta Technical College red zone. And again, it's going to be Curry just shy at the two-yard line. Almost a similar play there, and he almost got tripped up in a similar fashion. Thompson, boy, they've and answered. Thompson is, on on the door is moving at the speed of light and moving so fast. Flag down. And Only offense. Play a game the ball before the ball is put ready for play. Thompson snapping the ball before the ball is put into play. How, how is that hey, logistically Cleveland, possible? Hold it, hold it. He snapped, yeah, yeah, we're hearing the officials. He snapped it before they put it in play. I was about to say, there's no way it was delayed game. They were going too fast for that. So it is second and eight from the Burke County 11 with 3.13 to play. Thompson can get a first down without a touchdown. Again, Curry is the back. Curry's got it. Curry with room. Curry, touchdown, Thompson. Yeah, uh, this Curry kid is a man. We're seeing so many guys step up and make plays that we weren't, you know, expecting based on the stats. Stats don't always tell the story, even though I'm a stat guy. And Curry with a big, big series there for Thompson. And A.B., that drive only took about a minute and a half off the clock. And the Augusta, uh, Georgia Military College kicks for college extra point could pull Thompson back within three. Sign of a great team, John. They go down 10, some guys give up. Not this Thompson squad, too good a football team to do that. Sam Derry is true on the extra point. Game on, 27-24, Thompson back within three with 3.06 to play in Waynesboro. With no timeouts though. And we talked about that earlier, that could be big. This is the best one call that's all. Do you onside <laughs> kick it? 306 and no timeouts, you got to. Yeah. Let us see. Well, while we've got a moment, let's we'll uh -oh. squeeze in the here stump A B trivia question while we all catch our breath. Uh-oh, here we go. Thompson, obviously, the hall, the uh, alumni, uh, the uh, alma mater of Pro Football Hall of Famer Ray Guy. Yes. Obviously, we've spoken each week this no. year about how the Greater Augusta Sports Council awards the Ray Guy Award yes. for the best punter in college football at the end of each year. Uh, uh, I, I got a bad feeling on this <laughs> already. My question is a three-parter. Uh-oh. Matt Lane loves a three-parter. He's, he's excited right now. All right, first, there's only one kicker, a punter from the University of Georgia who has ever won the award. His father 
was a great kicker, the College Football Hall of Famer. Name the father and the son. Give Kevin you a second. Butler, Drew Butler. Very good. You got two, the first two parts. The, the third part might be a little trickier. We'll get to that after the onside kick. The Bulldogs are going to go for the onside kick here with 3.06 left to play. And it. down three. This is it. Remember, right the Bulldogs with no timeouts. The Bulldog the ball is loose. I Who's on it? it? Do the Bulldogs have it? They'll have to unpile it. Wow, this is what Watch it comes it. down to, moving bodies. This could be the ball game right here. I thought there were three white jerseys there, but Matt's down on the field saying Burke might have got it. And it is Burke County football. Wow. Well, the players aren't wanting to give up, so there's pushing and shoving going on. Well, looks like cooler heads. We don't they are want to prevail. see such a great game. No, stop. You know, marred by this. And I understand this is a dog fight. We already saw something at the end of the uh, South Aiken yeah, uh, North Augusta, Augusta game. game. So so several don't players want, don't want to see key that. Players. Yeah. Matt Lane, though, look, it looked to me from up here, I was saying maybe Thompson Ball. Matt Lane, give him credit. He's right down there on the field. He said Burke County got it. So right here, it looks like there's three whites, but Bill Knight, number four, Bill Knight got in there, the quarterback, got in there. Hey, how many quarterbacks do you know? He didn't have his baseball glove on, but he got it somehow. <laughs> So the Bears will have it at their own 46 with 3.05, and they'll try to milk the clock now. Up the middle, they'll go with Jalen Odom, and he'll be pushed back. And Matt Lane points out from the sideline that as it stands right now, the great, as we were talking about the trivia question and Ray Guy, the Greater Augusta Sports Council Ray Guy Award punter of the game, may have just made the play of the game as Knight dove on that loose ball on the onside kick. Well, he got his all-hands team in there, and Bill Knight certainly a part of that, and Knight was able to get the football out of there. And clock They're just letting continues run. to run. If you're Burke County, the clock is your friend right now. Thompson cannot stop it. No timeouts left. Remember that timeout they called? We were wondering what happened on the sideline. 2.20 to play. Continues to run. Ooh. This is Knight. Knight bobbled the football there. Yeah, and he's that was fumbled dangerous. it once. He's fumbled it twice, but he recovered one of them. Very dangerous, but no, maybe got one. We we'll call it one. Third and nine. Clock continuing to run. 203, 202. Now you can see our three. It's, well, it's on the two. game. On the yeah, the, there we the go. clock right. here at the there game. Now it's right. The clock on your screen is now correct. Inside two minutes. Yeah, and I apologize. Earlier they had it where it was winding down to like 30 seconds. It actually is just under two and now, minutes. And now it's a zero. That is not correct. 145, 144, 143, 141. You sound like, the, you sound like Larry Munson. That is the greatest compliment <laughs> anyone in the history of the world has paid me. There you go. I'm yeah. just buttering you up so, that, so maybe you'll make the question a little easier. Well, maybe it is easy as they take another Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout on the field. So here's your third uh, part of your question. Maybe the first two oh, parts so were easier. That was first two. That was first two. Oh, Father great. and son were first two. So, yeah. All right. So. Uh, the last three years, the winner, two different punters, but the winner has come from the same school. Name that university. For some reason, I'm thinking Utah. You're unbelievable. Utah. Utah. There it is. Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> yes. Record intact. Matt Lane, what say you down on the sideline? He's going to say I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Silence from Matt Lane. And that is your Augusta Auto Auction sideline <laughs> Man. What a ball game we have seen here tonight. We have 99 seconds left to go. And Thompson needing basically a miracle here. They, they, Burke County has it third and nine. So if you do the math here, after Burke County snaps it, if they don't get the first down, and they don't, they go for it on fourth down and don't get it. Burke has only punted once and it yeah. was blocked. Thompson could get the ball back with about 40 seconds, 35 seconds left to play. But that's Kelly if Burke County doesn't get a first down. And here is Kelly. There he goes. First down. And that should wrap it up for the Bears as this Bears Den crowd is ready to celebrate. Well, why not? Only fitting that Damari Kelly does it. 
when he came into the game, he changed the whole complexion. And keep in mind, he had an 85-yarder call back. Now he did stay in bounds. That's the other big thing at the end of that run. So now the clock starts yeah, as they spot the ball. I was trying to I was figure out. Why he was he, running to the sideline like, no, you don't want to do that. If he was, a, I was trying to see. We were kind of screened on the far side here whether he was able to stay in bounds or not. But he did. So the clock is running. 110. There you go. Now it's correct on your screen as we tick down to a minute to play. And now the Bears can just take a knee and go into victory formation because Thompson cannot stop the clock again. Do you think Coach Parker is upset that they're hurting their rushing stats here? <laughs> <laughs> no. i got the news for you. No. Just going to let you listen to this celebration for just a moment. Drink it in, Burke County. Pause in the action here as we have the sideline warning, but it's not going to have any effect on the outcome. As we stand here in the press box and look at this Burke County crowd, everybody with their phones out, taking pictures of the scoreboard, taking pictures of the celebration that is about to begin on the field. The Burke County players beginning to dance on their sideline. One more snap should do it. There's the man of the hour right there, Jamari Kelly. This is a win for the whole community, all of Burke County, all of Waynesboro. It is final. Burke County has toppled the number two team in the state. As far back as I could tell in, in my research before this game, Burke County had not beaten a top three ranked team here at the Bears Den in the regular season. That streak ends here tonight. And by the way, I did get a little message about why Bill Knight, didn't, uh, uh, William Knight, Bill Knight did not punt earlier, turf toe. And that might be why Jamari Kelly played a little bit more and obviously it worked out pretty well for Burke County. The celebration continues here at the Bears' Den. We will take a quick break. Eric Parker is about to get the Gatorade shower on the field if they can ever find him. So look out wherever you are, Matt Lane. We'll catch up with them in just a moment. Your final score here tonight, the Burke County Bears 27, the Thompson Bulldogs 24. You're watching Game Night Live. Crispy. Number five, Burke County has knocked off and upset number two, Thompson, handing the Bulldogs their first loss of the season. Burke County remains undefeated and all but wraps up the Region 3 Quad A Championship here at the Bears Den tonight. Simply an unbelievable football game, A.B. Yeah, I tell you what, Jalen Odom was awesome, but at the turf toe for Bill Knight allowed Kelly more carries, and Damari Kelly was unbelievable tonight. And you bet Eric Parker is a happy man down on the sideline, the Augusta Auto Auction sideline report with Matt Lane. Matt, you've got to ask him about going forward on that fourth down play. Of course I'm going to ask him about that, John. Coach Parker, i got to ask you, which of your four uh, fourth down conversions was your favorite in that second half? All of them. <laughs> we needed all of them, too. <laughs> Coach, uh, going into the second half, obviously your teams have always been tough, always showing a lot of resilience. What, what are you most proud of of your team in the second half, really solidifying yourself not only in the region but really as a uh, favorite going into the state playoffs? Well, you know, this thing wasn't exactly pretty. Of course, co good teams do that to you. They force you to make some mistakes. But I just thought our kids kept coming back, kept answering the bell, kept trying to find a way to execute, and uh, got it done. Boy, it was a heck of a ball game. Always a good game against you and Thompson, Coach. Go celebrate with your team. We're going to do that. <laughs> back to you, John. Well, we say that every week, go celebrate with your team. This is a celebration that might last into Saturday. Yeah. I, they might but, close down <laughs> Waynesboro tomorrow. <laughs> hey, don't expect anything happening there. They, they're going to be celebrating. But, look, it was what he said's right. It was two great football teams. Give Thompson credit. When, when they fell down 10 late, a lot of teams give up there. Thompson didn't. They went right down the field and scored. You had two great football teams doing battle in a great atmosphere. It doesn't get any better than this. 
And uh, in the end, Burke County was able to get the get the close victory. And uh, they had so many different people from Jalen Oda, Miles Simon, Damari Kelly, Bill Knight, who maybe not on offense as much tonight, but he recovered that onside kick. Uh, even with that turf toe, he was able to make it make his presence felt in the game. But just a great, great football a game between two great football teams. And you see that celebration going on on the field. And I know you like to try to make a Steelers reference every week. Yeah. I like to try to make a Varsity Blues reference every week. You know, the <laughs> end where they talk about this is a night they'll remember the rest yeah, of their yeah. lives. These kids are going to, no matter what happens the rest Without of this question. year, they will remember this night the yeah. rest of their lives. Now it is time to award our Augusta Pain Center hit of the game. We had a few nominees tonight, but I think I know which one it is. Well, yeah, I do too. It's Tyler Curry getting kind of tumbled here, and I think it was 46. We, I got to figure out who it was that hit him. It was number 40-something for Burke <laughs> County, and I apologize. I think it was 46, but I'm not 100% sure. It was either 45 or 46 and, and who laid the hit. So it was either Jermichael Dukes or Vernon Denmark. One of the two got him there. And that is our Augusta Payne Center hit of the game for week 11. And still to come, we have our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. And again, uh, I think we have more nominees this week than we may have had any other week this year. Well, absolutely, and like I said, Jalen Odom with the early touchdown. He also had the 60-yard run that set up the other touchdown. Uh, you know, whoever they put in there at quarterback seemed to do pretty well, but in the end, it was it was Damari Kelly that was a standout on offense. And defensively, there were some big names. The Washington kid played great. Uh, Miles Simon was outstanding. Uh, and then on the Thompson side, let's not forget, Mills Riding made some great throws tonight on that side. Christian Tut with the early touchdowns for Thompson. Uh, stood out, and Anthony Larkins up front on that defensive uh, line for for Thompson was outstanding as well. And as we wait to go back down to Matt Lane for our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game, it's a good point to make that, you know, the loss here for Thompson tonight, it, it, nobody, you hate, you hate for somebody to have to lose this game, but Thompson still has a ton to play for as we go ahead in this season. Oh, yeah. And it, it, look, if it plays out like it should, if the teams that are supposed to win do, and we know that doesn't always happen, but if it does, it, all it means is you're still going to have to, in this re, in this classification, you're still going to have to beat Cardsville. You're just going to have to beat them before the state mm -hmm. championship game uh, if you're Thompson. I think both these teams can make a deep run. I don't know if either of these teams are as good as Thompson was last year, but I think both are capable of making a run. It's just going to be a matter of, you know, you got to come to play when you get that far in the state. All right, well, it is time now to reveal our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game once again down to the sideline and Matt Lane. All right, we apo apologize. We're having a uh, technical difficulty apparently with Matt Lane's microphone. There are approximately, I don't know, half of half of Burke County is on the field. They, they've yeah. come up from Sardis, you know, that that from uh, from here in Waynesboro. So a lot of people around there, and uh, so uh, the te technical aspects can be a little wonky sometimes yeah. with all those people around. So we'll get back downstairs to Matt in a moment. But your final score here once again in what was just a memorable ball game, uh, Burke County 27, Thompson. 24 uh burke county next week will head uh down to or actually be home i should say against hepsiba uh, thompson will also be home against richmond academy both those teams closing out the regular season closing out region play as well yeah and then of course i, I don't want to leave here i think i'm just gonna stay but <laughs> no no offense to laney and josie but i mean th this was unbelievable yeah next week Talk about rivalry games, a big one in Richmond County. It's always a huge party. Talk about tailgating and all. We'll have that going on next week as we wrap up our regular season here with Game Night Live uh, at Josie as they take on their arch rivals from Laney. Both of them struggling a bit this year, but that game is always one where you just throw out the record book. It, it is almost impossible to believe that next week is our final game of the year for Game flown, Night Live. Flown by. It is absolutely flown by. A game of the year for uh, end of the year for us, but we still got playoffs and we've got a lot of teams that'll be in the playoffs. So it's gonna be fun to watch and see which one of these teams can make a, 
a big move and make a deep run perhaps. And I know after we're done next week, you'll uh, go back to, you'll continue to follow the uh, playoffs on your, your, your Facebook page and That's continue right, to yeah. make picks. I'll be rejoining the Football Friday Night staff where yeah. I've been for low these many years as we continue to cover the playoffs each and every Friday night at 1135. And speaking of, uh, if you missed anything here tonight, folks, if you're just getting home from your game, uh, you can uh, catch all of the highlights from this one uh, coming up at 1135 over on WJBF News Channel 6, the only 30-minute show ded dedicated completely to high school football. Uh, Nathan Palm, Zach Hughes, we had a good hit one here tonight. They are uh, working hard back in the sports office, and I know uh, they'll uh, bring you all of the activity from this one and all the games from around the CSRA coming up tonight at 11:35. And if you want to see this game in its entirety from start to finish, don't forget we re-air this broadcast coming up at noon. That's noon this Sunday uh, on WJBF News Channel 6 to get your Sunday started before you uh, watch your NFL games. Let's try to go down uh, one more time to Matt Lane and see if we can reveal our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. And welcome down on the field for our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. Of course, we couldn't do any of this without our friends at McDonald's. One of the best games each and every year, the Burke County Thompson game. This one also did not disappoint. For the defensive side of the ball, I want to go ahead and hand out some awards. Number 33, Miles Simon, plays defensive line, kind of plays a little bit everywhere for the Burke County defense. Terrific game all over the field. Obviously, our choice for defensive player of the game. I want to hand the award to Miles Simon. And real quick, Miles. Just can you talk about how exciting it is to get a win over a big rival like Thompson? It's very exciting. We haven't, they are, all we, they told us we haven't done anything that <laughs> our whole four years of high school. It's just amazing to finally win, win one against Thompson. That's right. And on offense, a guy that we've uh, grown to love on Game Night Live, number eight, Damari Kelly. We saw him as a sophomore really stand out. We knew there was something special there. Tonight, a terrific lineup for him, 11. Uh, runs for 52 yards, two touchdowns, and then three of seven for 34 yards in the air. Our offensive player of the game, Damari Kelly, quarterback for the Burke County Bears. And real, real quick, Damari, you've been a really exciting player ever since. You know, we saw you as a sophomore. How have you progressed each and every year? Kind of, you know, you don't, you don't. Seems like you get a ton of carries or passes at the beginning of the year, but each and every year towards the tail end of the year, Coach Parker really puts it in your hands. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. I just make plays, and I can't do it without my team. So I'm, I'm proud of us, and we've just been working hard. Like like Miles said, we we have we have had anything since I don't know when, and now that we have one, it's just amazing. And kind of going into the postseason, what are your guys' plans after after a game like this? Celebrate, and then come back next week and get another W. That's right. Again, the Burke County Thompson game, always one of the biggest games of the year in our local area. I want to thank, uh, once again, thanks McDonald's for always sponsoring the offensive and defensive players of the game. Back to you, John. All right, Matt, congratulations to our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. Uh, A.B., this one was fun. Man, I, I might need to take a nap up here. You think they're going to let us stay? <laughs> well, we might have time because as I look out at the traffic, yeah, uh, it might true. take us a little while to get back I to Augusta I knew this was going to be big already, but when we pull up and we're a half a mile from the football yeah. field and we're stuck in traffic, I was like, uh-oh. But, no, just a great game. We knew going in these were two of the best teams in the area, if not the best two, uh, with apologies maybe to North Augusta, maybe the only other one in the argument. Uh, and we knew it was going to be a dogfight tonight. And in the end, Burke County was able to make a few more plays and get the win. And, and here's the key. Both these teams like to run the football. Burke County did it better tonight, and that's why they won the football game. Thompson went to the air a lot more than they normally do, and they did come up with some big plays. But Burke County's offensive line won this football game. And, and of course, Damari Kelly making a few incredible individual plays as well. But, you know, uh, Eric Parker – uh, he should be certainly proud of this team, but you know, on the other side of the, on the other side, you know, shouldn't hang their heads. You no. got you got to forget this one. You're going to be at home in all likelihood, barring something crazy. You're going to be at home for the state playoffs, and you got to forget this one and move on and, and and get your win next week against Richmond Academy at home, and then focus on that playoff run because this game isn't going to matter once those playoffs start. So one more time, what a ball game here tonight. Uh, Burke County remains unbeaten and basically clinches the Region 3-4A championship. The number five ranked Bears will not be run number five much longer. They will move up as they have upset number two Thompson here tonight, 27-24. To 
A reminder to you, uh, we have a full re-air broadcast of this uh, game in its entirety. Trust me, folks, you'll want to watch it this Sunday noon on WJBF News Channel 6. Football Friday night coming up at 1135 over on WJBF News Channel 6. Here on MeTV, we will be joining our regularly scheduled program already in progress. I believe that would be Hogan's Heroes, so enjoy that. Uh, once again, your final score from the Bears' den, the Burke County Bears 27, the Thompson Bulldogs 24. We will see you next week from White Road Stadium in downtown Augusta for Laney Josie. Good night from Waynesburg.